There's more. As if a tractor wasn't enough. A diesel utility vehicle as well. And corporate Kubota folks are here. Excited about that being a diesel. Hey, one less reason to leave the farm. The diesel comes to us. I want you guys to meet the team here. What's your name and what do you do at Kubota? Hi, I'm Matt Walker. I'm the product manager for the M60 through M6 series tractor lineup. Ah, nice. And that's what I got. I got the M60. You've got an M7060. Okay. Hey, I'm David Bowman. I'm the regional sales manager with Kubota Tractor. Nice. Hi, I'm Casey Roberts. I'm the product marketing specialist for the M60 through M6 series. All right. I'm Evan Wise. I work at Kubota Vash for the local dealer nice. here. Nice. You're my local contact. That's me. So, um, why the M60? Why, why did you think it was a great fit for this homestead? Well, we were, you know, talking to yourself and uh, we were looking at the type of work you're trying to do here, what you're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. what current product, you know, you're currently using. So the M7060 is the ideal tractor for this yeah. sort of size operation. It's a great all-round tractor. Yeah, you got a great front end loader on there, lots of lift capacity, mm -hmm. and plus it matches really well with an awful lot of the Lampride performance right. matched equipment. Right. Yeah, and so one of our big pain points with our old tractor is we couldn't lift the 2,000 pound tote yep. off the tractor trailer because if, if we buy feed in 2,000 pounds, we save a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. And so. this thing will do it, I think, no problem. Yeah, no, you've got plenty of lift capacity on here. We've got yeah. the weights on the rear end of the tractor there, so you've got plenty of stability. So you're going to be able to do everything you yeah. need to do with this machine. And it'll be super versatile, which is important on a homestead because it's not like we're just going out and plowing all day or something. Yeah. Got to do all different kinds of things from scooping out bedding to unloading feed to ha hauling wood or whatever. Yeah, that's right. And you've got a yeah. great line of, of equipment here. We've got the four in one bucket. We've got the pallet tines. We've got the bale spear. So, you know, whatever you want to do with the front end loader, you've got that covered. Yeah. And then you've also got you know, your disking and uh, you've got your rotary tiller for, you know, smaller feed plots that you want to put in. You got the rotary cutter and then we've got the aerator here so yeah. you can go out there and do your pasture improvement okay so i got to i got to use that the tractor yesterday mm -hmm. and i feel comfortable with that maybe maybe you could show me something on it maybe we could start there yes yeah, sure. and, and that's what you're here today too right to teach me a little bit yeah we just want to make sure you're comfortable with everything we've got yeah. out here and uh, everybody can use it safely and okay maybe you could give me a tour in case i'm not Thinking of a certain feature or whatnot. All right. Well, I guess uh, we start here on the back of the machine. We've got the Lampride Quick Hitch 15. So this will make it real easy when you're wanting to change out the various different implements that we bought you. You can just back up. You got some locking pins. Right. You know, once everything's lined up, hook your implement on. Yeah, and take things on and off real quick. Just makes life a lot easier for you. We'll demo that in a second. But basically, you line up these three hooks. That's right. And that's it. That's yep. right. Secure it with your latch. And that's yeah, you it. Make it's it all easy. on there. Then you just left uh, hydraulic connections or PDO connections, depending on which machine you're using. When you want to take it off, lift your catches. There we go. Put the implement down nice. on the machine, it just unhooks itself. Okay. So what are what are all six hydraulic connections well, for? Does it matter? You've got three remote valves. Okay. So you've got um, two standard detent and one float detent, which we'll go through later on. Okay. So these, uh, yeah, basically gives you th three connections because it's an out and a return. Oh, okay. The hydraulics. So uh, I think really we'll do that when we you'll connect. be using that on the um, on the aerator down there. That'll yeah. be your raise and lower, lifting you in and out of work. You'll do that using one of these valves. Okay. Similar to the quick hitch on the back, you have these two levers that make it really easy for you to scoop in and pick up drop this and then pick up the next implement. It's one of the big differences you're going to find from your old your old fold there is you've got a forge reverse shuttle lever here. Mm -hmm. So you can change direction without having to use the clutch. Yeah. So that'll allow you, you know, once you're driving your forge, you want to move to reverse, obviously. A little lower speed for make sure you're safe. Just lift the lever, slide it into reverse, and the nice. tractor will stop and then start moving in reverse. A four speed transmission. And then you've also got a high MLI. So you've got an eight by eight transmission. Nice. So four in uh, high range, four in low range. 
And then this is... That's your hand throttle? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're raising low and your draft controls there on the, for your rear linkage. Okay. The yellow knob there is your PTO engagement. Yep. So push it down, turn it to engage. To disengage, you just oh. have to push. Nice. Yeah. So the idea behind that is if you're you're working, something happens to the machine behind you that kind of scares you or something's going wrong, you just hit it and it stops the PTO. It's quick. Yeah. yeah. And then here you've got your three remote valve control levers. So you got two standard detent. So that's just yeah. And what is that lifting? They extend and retract, so that's working those three valves on the back of the tractor. Okay. And then this one, a float detent. So, and we'll show you when, if you want to hook on the aerator, you'll see how that's all right. All right. Yeah. Four wheel drive, engage and disengage. Are we disengaged now? That's disengaged, so to engage, you pull up. Okay. Uh, as far as a parking brake, I think you probably figured out. Yep. So yep. Um, that out, you press that one, that'll adjust your steering wheel. Yeah, this will adjust the steering wheel. Yep. There you go. You got some work lights, so that's your work light switch. Obviously hazards, which hopefully you're not going to need. Um, these are for the exhaust regeneration system. So for the tier four final, uh, legislation that was passed, so all diesel engines have to have a filter system. There's a limit on the number of particulates that an engine is allowed to produce. So there's a DPF filtration system under here. So basically, that's catching all those harmful, you know, pollutants and all the particles. And after a certain number of hours, it will do a regeneration. So basically, it, it, the tractor does it all by itself. It will heat up the that part of the exhaust to such slight. I can't remember now. It's like, the th uh, not a thousand degrees, but yeah, you know, it gets crazy hot, and it basically burns off all those particulates in the in the filter, so it cleans itself out. What you will find is if the tractor's been used and working hard, it'll do that itself, and you won't have to worry about it. If you're running around the farm here and you're not using the tractor and it's not really getting hot, which is is fine, it will the tractor will tell you it needs to do a regeneration. Now all the instructions are here on this sticker on the on the dashboard. So there's a procedure that you have to go through to allow it to do that regeneration. And so normally it just involves parking it somewhere out of the way, put the engine speed to like 1500 RPM, mm -hmm. okay, and it'll it take care of itself, it. leave it yeah. for 20 minutes. Yeah, and it says all that right here. There is a way if you're working in a hay barn for an extended period of time and it yeah. needs to regenerate, you can inhibit that, so you can delay that, which is this button. Now that will allow it to, you can inhibit it, uh, basically delay that regeneration for I think it's a maximum of three times and then it will go into a D-rate. So the engine will say no. All right, enough's enough. It'll restrict the amount of power you're going to get from the engine and to reset that you'll have to call Evan and he'll have to send somebody out with a computer to do it. So okay. that's probably one to, one to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do get people that yeah, maybe a little resistant to the technology that keep hitting the delay, 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 and then, oh, my tractor doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very impressed with how quiet yeah. this was because yeah. 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 he had left his truck running and this was running at the same time and I was thinking that this was what was so loud. Mm -hmm. But then when I walked past it, I was like, that's not like anything. Don't do the truck. <laughs> Yep. Truck's louder than the tractor. Yes, it is. It is. I, yeah. I was very impressed with that. I was like, oh, this is nice. Right. Uh, I guess the one thing we did forget down by your foot there, there's the diff lock, the differential lock. So if you do find you're in a sticky situation, mm. Mm -hmm. trying to pull out and one of the rear wheels starts to spin, okay. and did the clutch, push your, put your foot yes. down on that orange lever. No, mm -hmm. that is not gas. And then no, it. that's the gas. <laughs> yeah. Right here. Yeah, that one at the back there. That's it. Um, yes. Push this one, baby. <laughs> yeah, just push it. Back. Push that one. That's, one. That's the what they said when they were here. Exactly so then this locks the. Yeah, so that'll right. lock the rear differential. So that locks <laughs> the rear wheels trouble. together. Okay. So you get more traction. Okay. And hopefully that'll just get you out of trouble. Morning. But right. yeah, try not to. If you if the wheel's spinning, jump on. Try not to jump on the pedal and try and engage it because it'll probably it'll take you a certain number of times. But then, yeah. Okay. Even machinery has its limits. Pop in the hood. There you go, pop in the hood. <laughs> nice. So you got your air filter. So this all, you can unclip this, so that'll be part of your regular maintenance if you're doing you know, a lot of dusty work. You probably want to be doing that every day. Um, 
Yeah, you know, normal operation, probably not every day. But if okay. you're really getting in a lot of dust, it's always a good idea to keep that clean. Yeah. You've got your cooling package, so your radiator here. It's got a nice little grill on the front that you can unhook. There's two hooks, so that unhooks, pull nice. that out, clean it out. So that stops a lot of the heavy dust and debris getting into the engine. That's the electronic engine controller, so uh -huh. that's the that's the heart of the engine. That's what's controlling your uh -huh. engine while you're using it. Okay, nice. One cool thing about these forks I noticed, I'll, I, I lift the, I lift mm -hmm. and the forks stay level. So this is the hydraulic self leveling okay. valve. So this normal operation up, if you want the hydraulic self leveling, you push that down. So that means that you've got the bucket or the pallet tines level and flat on the floor. As you raise it to its maximum height, it will maintain those pallet tines. Yeah, that's, an, that's a nice feature. Yeah, and that's all run through this hydraulic valve. Right load of control valve. We're gonna get to work with this thing. First thing we're gonna do, demo, is we're gonna put these concrete weights on the aerator while we have the fork on. All right, now we're gonna get the forks off and the bucket on. Real easy, quick attach system, two levers. That's it. That's it. <laughs> hey, you just pull that, put your force flat on the ground, lower the bucket and slide it back away. Okay. And that's your front right. lane implement. Let's Take try it. it. Pick it up. Right. Go forward. Right. <laughs> that's all. Forward. Oh, that was easy. Now that locks the pins in. All right, and then how do we hook this up? So, hook that up to make it easier. You probably want to just roll the bucket forwards, put it flat on the ground. That gives you access to the two points there on the front. Okay. Line. So we'll twist this bucket to get it out of the way and then we can yeah. get it that easier. Yeah, you can, okay. You can probably reach, but it's easier to do it. Okay. All right. How do you know which one goes to which? Uh, oh, I male, guess you female. can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't. One to male, one to female. Okay. Real Let's simple. take this off. What is this called? The drawbar. Yeah, okay. Pull the pin, that slides out. Okay. Case it. Don't forget your pin. Then for storage, just slide it back in there. Okay. Hopefully it won't get lost. Cylinders that raise and lower it. Mm -hmm. You see they're all the way in now. There's okay. no silver shaft. So what we need to do is actually lengthen these. Oh. The right way. Lengthen them a couple of inches. Okay, that's making it so we can low, go down low enough. Yeah. Ah. Now. We can do it manually. Do this one manually. I'm getting roughly the same. You ready to keep going? You ready? Yep. Oh yeah, that's smooth. Okay. Gotta turn it. Oh well, I can turn it. Just make sure I got it on there, but. Next up, the aerator. So we gotta get the quick connect off. We don't need that. It's just pins. Three pins. Moving the top link, link out of the way. This is where it gets heavy. Okay, good to know. Picking up your safety chain. Winding down the jack. Now, how do you know which ones? 
Who do you pick? Go where? Oh, okay. Now, for this one, I'd go with the number three valve, the float okay. detent. Okay. So when you're in the field, you, you can just run it on the float, and I'll show you how to set the heights on the rear. Why are you saying number three? Because it's accessible right here on top? One, two, three. Okay. But this is the one with the float detent. So this oh, is where okay. you push the lever all the way forwards. Okay. It basically takes the pressure off the system. And okay. this will go and work in its lowest position. Okay. As you're lifting it, so sort of raising and lowering this, you're basically moving this hydraulic cylinder. Uh -huh. So when you're in kind of on the road or as this arrived this morning, a transport lock. And if you're doing any work on the machine where you're yeah. getting under it, oh. that slides in there. And then there's no way it can collapse on you. Pins in place, exactly. Okay. And yeah, when you're on the road, you probably want to drop that in, depending on okay. how far you're going. If you're just working around here, it's not where okay. it's probably required. Deep, you want to go in the field, you've got these clip collars. These are your deep. Yep. So they just clip measures. on there. So how deep do we want to go? That's a good question. So more, more, more is depth? More is shallow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, because let's go shallow today. Yeah. So we'll go shallow for the demo. That'll probably be enough. Okay. If we get on the flat, you'll see if you put the machine down, that'll come down now. And it probably won't even hit those because we're on hard ground. When okay. you're on the soft ground and those tines are going, cutting into the dirt, you'll see it, that'll go down. Okay. And should come down to those. And that's spots. what those concretes we're doing is it's going to weigh this down. Mm -hmm. exactly. to push the aerators down and that will overall get oxygen and, and water to our deeper into our pastures and make them better. That's right, pasture yep. improvement. Yep. Next up is the UTV with Evan. Okay, so on the RTV, so start RTV. starting it, so you're in neutral to start and then yep. park your brakes right here and then just you know, standard key start right there. Okay. Two and four wheel drive selector right in the middle. Nice. Um, light controls right here. Mm -hmm. You have four-way flasher button right here. Okay. Tilt steering. Make it easier to get on and off. Windshield wiper control right there in the center by. Coffee ready Four. to go. That's right. <laughs> For sure. Then over here on this side locks your rear end. So you just step on that. That'll get both rear tires pulling. Whenever you get unstuck or whatever, just let off and it goes right back to normal. Nice. If you need to hold that in, step on it and you get just got a little pull cord right there, a little cable that locks that in. Okay. So your hydraulic dump bed, all the way down this float. This is your up, this is your down. And that's that's machine powered, that's not... It's hydraulic. Nice. That's nice. We're we'll using a dump bed now. I want to show you how to change this. So, you know, this is convertible between two seat and four seat. Nice. All right, I'm going to walk you through this. If you'll, you may in this side, I'll man this side. All right. Okay. Start with disconnect this. This is a little rubber pull. Yeah. There. You've got yep. a U handle. So pull, yeah. Yeah. So far, so easy. Yeah. Yep. Lock that out of place. Nice. Nice, watch out. Good pinch. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's back in that back hole. Just keep it up. Nice. Over here. Pull handle out there. This? Mm -hmm. And it latches, you're going to latch into this part right here. All right. Nice. You get to where you can do this pretty quick, I imagine. That's it. And it's ready to go. Yes, sir. So now you're in four seat. We'll go with Jonah and Josiah first. Evan, you want to go or should I just go? Oh, you're good to go. Okay. Then, uh, Lily, come on, Lily. Everybody get your seat belts on. Okay. We're good? Okay. Listen to that diesel, boys. Look at that, guys. We're working now. There we go. Good like that. It's a lot of space, A lot of power underneath our seats here. I like this closed-in cab window here. That's glass. Oh, oh look, we've got a windshield wiper. Nice. What do you got? Some swag? Yep, we've got some good hats for you. Got some Land Pride merch. Nice. And then you got your Grow Local 
right All right, there. I like it. And some sweatshirts for y'all. Okay, well, thank you. All right, you guys are gonna have to go. Yep. Gotta drive to the airport. Thank you for coming all this way. That means a lot. I learned thank so you. much. Good, well, yeah. Feel so much more comfortable and confident. I hope you enjoy the machinery and yeah. Yeah. it'll put it to good use. Okay. I'm sure it'll help you a lot with what you're trying to do here. For sure. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Good deal. All right. All right. Thank you. Nice Thank you. All right. Yep. No kidding. Maybe an hour after Kubota left, the feed is here. So we get to try this tractor out in a really practical way. Well, it starts. 